Alrighty, time for a little bit of fun. This is 2.1 day one. We are slowing it down a little bit because of distance learning and hybrid. And so rather than covering all of 2.1 in one day like we typically would, we did our introduction. And now we're going to take a look at just the beginning part of 2.1, just the part that relates to functions. I talked a lot about this in the intro video, so hopefully you already know, and I'm going to move quickly through this because of it. Yesterday we learned that uh, in a, a function we have our domain, which is our x values or our inputs, and the range, which is the y values or our outcomes, what we would have thought of as the answers in the past. So our function notation read like this, f of x equals y. So that's kind of like what we used to write as an X and a Y. We would say, okay, I have that as my input and then I got this out. Back in the days when we used to make our tables, we'd say, okay, I put in a two and I got out a five and we would write it as two, five. Now we would write it as F of two equals five, meaning when I plugged in a two, I got out a five. So we have to start putting that new notation in with the things we already know. We talked about on the previous video that a function um, has to have each input or X go to exactly one output or Y. And so in a graphic form, that would mean something like this that passes the vertical line test we talked about yesterday. And to have it be not a function, we would need something that fails the vertical line test like this, because at this point in the graph, I cross my axis, excuse me, I cross my um, graph more than one time, whereas here, this one passes my vertical line test. One thing we didn't talk about yesterday is function notation um, and how we would then deal with evaluating. All this is telling you, keep in mind that that is your variable. So the T is everywhere in this equation. So this asks me to plug in a 2.5 to that equation. So you would say H of 2.5 equals negative 16 times 2.5 squared plus 12 times 2.5. And then I'm going to cram in that plus 8. So that's a little sneak peek for physics, by the way, uh, a little projectile motion formula that we stuck in there on you. And you would run that through your calculator, which goes back to all the things we talked about in chapter one and why we wanted to build that foundation. But you would say H of 2.5 is negative 62. So in the old days, we would have said, hey, if I put plug in a 2.5, I get out negative 62 as my Y. So those are kind of interchanging. That says or. But we're trying to lean more towards doing this notation because we're trying to get smarter and move towards pre-calc. All right. So tell whether each relation is a function and determine the domain and range. Um, if the relation is a function, then evaluate when f is negative two, or excuse me, f of negative two. We have a lot to do. So first of all, is this a function? Think back to the previous video. We have to look at the points and decide if it's a function. I look at the x's and see if there's repeats or not. Negative two, negative one, one, two, three. So since we have no x repeats, that means that we are going to say, yes, this is a function. So now that we know it's a function, that's the first thing that they asked us to do. Um, Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for my domain and my range. Sorry, I was looking at something else to make sure we were in the right place. So my domain is going to be a list of my X values. So I'm looking at my X's. I like to write them in number line order. So negative two is that one. Then negative one is here. Then I've got a one and a two. Make sure that one's negative. And then a three. So that's lovely writing. But that is going to be my domain. Um, my range for this one, which is going to be my y values, if I look at those, I have a negative three. Then I have a one. 
which actually is listed twice as a Y value, but it doesn't matter if my Y values repeat, then I have, I have a negative two, which if I'm gonna be a picky math teacher, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my negative two here and then my one so that they're in number line order. And lastly would be my three. So again, I'm just listing my X's and Y's. Taking a look at B, if I look at B, is that a function, yes or no? Well, this goes straight over. This one, these go to the same Y, but that is still gonna be okay because they don't go, they don't split to separate X values. Like I don't have this one going to two different Y's. And so then as long as each X goes to one Y, I'm good to go. So my domain is still, again, just my list, list uh, list of X's or inputs. So I would have negative three, negative one, two, and four. When I go to do my range, I'm looking at my outputs or my Y's, and it looks like I have negative four, a positive two, and a positive three. Awesome. In C, I'm still doing the same kind of thing because now I'm still using just X's and Y's. So negative two, one, one, four. This is a big fat no, because I have one going to two different values. Here it's saying when you plug in a one, you get out a negative one. But here when you plug in a one, you get out a two. It can't do that. So this one is not a function. It can't have two different values. Um, and so then it doesn't really make sense to list my domain and range. Normally these would be my domain values. You know, I would have my negative two, one, and four, but because they repeat, to me it doesn't make sense and I'm not gonna go ahead and list all that information. Now, back here, I didn't complete this part. It asks me for the value when I plug in a negative two. So in this first one, I'm gonna erase all the stuff I put over here. I can say, all right, well, I'll just look. Here's where I put in a negative two. And so my function's value, when I plug in a negative two, is actually negative three. They're looking for the Y value. In this one, in B, I don't even have, unless I wrote over it, nope. I don't even have an input for negative two. And so in that case, if they asked me, hey, what's the function's value at negative two, I would have to say it doesn't exist because it's not on my list. In this one, I, there is no function, but technically when I put in a negative two, I get out a negative four according to this, but I'm not writing it in function notation because it's not a function. All right, this is again probably the thing that is the most challenging and tomorrow, when, or whenever you start your worksheet, it's gonna start off looking like this. You're gonna get a whole series of graphs and your job is going to be to put in the domain and range and all of that good stuff. So let's take a walk through some of these. You're gonna be glad you did when it comes to trying to do your homework. So is this a function? Basically that's asking me, does it pass the vertical line test? Looking at this first one, if I wanted to put in a series of vertical lines, and see if it crosses more than once, it doesn't ever cross more than once. And so then I can say, yes, this is actually a function, my domain. Okay, so that's from left to right. This one goes forever left and then off to the right forever. So that's gonna be what we used to call all reals, but that's like so last year. Now we like to say it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, whoops, that's gonna not be good. And there we go, that's better. And I don't use or equal to because it never really gets to infinity. So I'm thinking X's. Now for range, this is the Y's and this goes from the bottom to the top. So if you start down here, the bottom has an arrow. So that's also gonna be um, starting at negative infinity and it goes up forever. So not only does it go to the right forever, it actually goes up forever. So again, I'm looking at all reals and I would have to write it in the same fashion, except I'm using a Y instead of an X because it is the range. This is asking me when X is four, what is Y? So I go to my graph, one, two, three, four, 
And then if that's four for an X, one, two, three, four and a half is kind of where that lands. So I'm gonna estimate that at 4.5. Then it's asking me to find f of negative four. So if you have a negative four for x, what is the y? So I go to negative one, two, three, four, down, one, two, three, four, it looks like I go down two. And so that would be my answer. And this is what it would look like kind of thinking back to the way we used to write them. Okie dokie. So stop the video for a second, fill this next one in, see if you're getting it right, and then come back and check it out. So first of all, I draw this in, that's a big fat no, because this fails the vertical line test. And since it fails the vertical line test, meaning it crosses the function more than once, it's not actually a function. So just for the practice, let's do domain and range. The weird part, part about this one is it starts here from left to right, which is at negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when I go to write my domain, I would say that it starts back at negative seven and it actually touches that value. So it's gonna be included, but then this end goes to the right forever. So on this end, it's gonna to go to infinity. Thinking about range, from the bottom, I see that this is an arrow. So I know it goes to negative infinity and then it does all this weird wonky stuff, but as far as how far it goes up, it also goes up to infinity. So it's technically all reals. From the bottom to the top, there's never a stop or a break. And so that's gonna be all reals. Here, um, it says, if it is a function, evaluate f of four. The reason this isn't a function is even though at four, one, two, three, four, it only has one, two, three, four, if it only has one value, when I try to go to f of negative four, one, two, three, negative four, I get a value here or one, two, three, here. And so this is another reason that it's not a function, is that one x goes to two y values. So much to learn, look how smart you are. Ooh, this one's gonna be a doozy. So I'm gonna use my red pen. Red pens are fun for tricky ones. Is it a function? Yes or no? Again, try it yourself, come back and check it out. If you imagine drawing little vertical lines all along here, this park is weird because there's nothing there, but it doesn't ever cross more than once. And so I can think, all right, that just passed the vertical line test. And so that's a big fat yes. My domain has two separate parts because right in here from left to right, there is no graph. I have two pieces. So I'm gonna need two different listings in my domain. This piece from here to here is one and it goes forever to the left because there's an arrow. And then I'm doing domain, so that's gonna be an X. And then it stops right here at one. I'm going to the X axis. And because that's a colored in circle, I'm gonna do or equal to. But now I also need to take a look at this piece from left to right. I don't care how high it's going, I'm doing left to right. So the second part of my domain is going to start wherever this started on the X, one, two, three, four. So that part starts at four, included, and then it goes off to the right forever. So that's going to be to infinity. So range is gonna be tricky on this one. The range is gonna go from the lowest to the highest. Now, at first it looks like this is my lowest point, but pay attention to this. This arrow means that this is gonna come on down here and go forever. So my range is actually gonna go from negative infinity up to, and now see this one goes up to one, but see how this one starts here? So there's never a gap, even though from left to right there was a gap, I can't highlight a gap between the two pieces because they overlap. And so if you're talking about the lowest it ever goes, that's infinity. And then if you're talking about the highest it ever goes, that's also infinity. Wise for range, because even though this part's weird, in here, there's always a value. I never have a spot where there's a break from top to bottom that I could highlight in between. 
So that one's a tricky one. You got to really, that's a thinker for sure. Okay, so F of four means when I plug in a four, so let's do that. I go one, two, three, four. What is the value? It looks to be negative three, meaning plug in a four, get out a negative three. That's how we used to think about that. But now we're smart and we use this function notation. This is saying, hey, when you plug in a negative four, what do you get for y? So I go to negative one, two, three, four. It goes down one, two, three, four, five. So that point is there, meaning that my f of negative four is negative five. I told you these are doozies. All right, we're gonna go out with a snake kind of thing, apparently. So even though this is wild and crazy, does it pass the vertical line test? If I draw in a bunch of vertical lines, do they cross over twice? Each vertical line crosses one spot, so we get a yes out of that. Plus we're studying functions, so most of them are gonna be functions, otherwise it's tricky to practice. Now, even though this has a whole bunch of crazy business going on, if you watch from left to right, nobody cares about up or down right now, we're just talking about domain, from left to right, I never have to pick up my really loud pencil. And so that is going to be all reals, which I'm now writing like kind of like that, except for don't use a Y like I was about to. Go ahead out to infinity. Awesome. Range. I love the range on this one. It's so fun. It makes you feel so smart. What is the range? Lowest to highest. So think for a second. What is the lowest the squiggle grow goes? right there. So it goes to zero. It's included because it does hit zero and we're doing range. And then the highest it goes is right here. The entire graph takes place in this region between zero and one, two, three, four. So my friends, that is my range. There's no graph outside of there. If I was looking for places I don't have to graph, I'd be looking out here. I don't have any graph out here and I don't have any graph up here. It's all happening in that one region. Love that, so exciting. So back to this, this is saying when you plug in four, what do you get out? So at, oh, I lost my axis, one, two, three, four. I'm right about there. So it kind of looks like a two. And this one's saying, hey, when you plug in negative four, what do you get? So I go to negative one, two, three, four, and it looks to me like, I don't know, I kind of blobbed over it. I think that's supposed to be at two also because this is symmetrical. So this is our old way of writing. That's the new way of writing. So the more you can practice this, the better. And if you do your 2.1 worksheet on the front, then you will be um, really getting to practice these things, especially the graphics.